council members, Brother Billy Fong, elders, brothers, sisters, and dear children. Today we are here to witness a special play. Yashodra of Kapila Vastu. In fact, this is the fourth play done by the demon and all roles are casted by the demon himself. Here, the first one was Ada Tirukalyanam, followed by Mira, then the story of Sita, entitled Sitaim. Now, this is the fourth play. All this I aimed at enriching our lives by the following of the cast, where they show the spiritual life of them, the women who indicate and became a role model to the world by highlighting, by enriching the spirituality. Now, many will wonder, what is this? Who is this Yashodra? Why is she? What is so special about Yashodra? Let's think, what is it about? Why is it Yashodra? Then suddenly a thought came, why not? So let's hear the, I call this person the brain bank. The brain bank of all this play is none other than our great auntie Jagadeva. She will come and share her thought of why she selected Yashodra and not any other character. We let we welcome the great role model for the ladies' queen or satisfied of the founder of Malaysia, Auntie Jagadeva. I think she needs loudest part. My most revered Topan Ma and Mother Mangalam, who I think held back two of the epitomes of women's empowerment, and all the revered guests over here, who are all fellow seekers seeking the path of enlightenment as Buddha did. Now, Yashodhana of Kapilavastu very rarely done, and we dared to do it. When I was a small child, we always learned the story of Buddha, but there was this picture that's put on your brochure where he steals out in the middle of the night, leaving his sleeping wife and little boy, little child. And then always wondered why did he do that? And surely he could not have being the epitome of compassion and love, and how could he ever do that? So I had always been thinking about, what's the story behind it? Could he have stolen out of her as she was sleeping? What is the story behind it? And Swami has always said, when you're passionately wanting to do something, some power from above comes in and inspires you. So I had passionately thinking about it for three over years and I began to read a great deal and there was this write-up by this uh, historian researcher Gatira Kotari and I read a lot about her and finally into my hands came B.K. Modi, the great industrialist who produced a 52-part serial on the Buddha. And it was amazing that about 10 episodes of that serial was completely focused on Yashodhana. And I felt my passion for it had led me to watch these and read Gadra Kotari and her researches. Now, I often wonder, and after having read a great deal about it, I rethought really about my own marriage and my own commitment. Because reading about Yashodhana and her commitment to his call was something that inspired me a great deal. And also being associated with Topan and her connection with the Ramakrishna mission. I've read a great deal of Sharda Devi herself, the Holy Mother, and it always was the best love story I had ever read, the Holy Mother's story. 
One documentary says that she was just a seven-year-old child when she went on a village fair with her father holding her. And as she went through this fair, she saw this 24-year-old youth over there and she pointed to him and said, I will marry him. That little six-year-old child, that was the Holy Mother. And it also said that while he was so God intoxicated and crazy, and nobody wanted to give him a bride, nobody wanted to give him a bride, Ramakrishna himself said, my bride waits for me in Jayarambadi. He said it, and that I think was a great love story. And of course, when they married and when they went, he asked her, are you going to pull me down into the depths of mortal life? And she said, no, I have come to help you in your spiritual life. And I think those are beautiful stories. And in the Buddha story as well, Yashodara says, many, many lifetimes I've been waiting for you, only to help you in your spiritual enlightenment. So as we look deeply into it, as spiritual beings, all of us here, fellow seekers, and as we look at our spouses and ourselves, we would just say that here we are, each to help the other on this search for enlightenment. And that is why it was so wonderful to do her story. I have romanticized her perhaps, but that was just because the children loved it being done that way. Now, I also want to thank a whole lot of people. Brother Jagger has always said, if you inspire love, people will do anything for you. And I'm shocked at the support that I've got for this. People from all over have come and helped so much. The children were fantastic. The, the gurus were amazing. All the makeup and the costume were all done by them. Money came pouring in just about to fit our payment of our bills. And I also want to thank Brother Jagger because he was the first person in the entire side world to start a women's organization. And today we have been proud of each And the women have felt so much strength in supporting one another, and that's wonderful. I also want to thank Brother Ravi, Dr. Ravi, in the absence of Hari, who was my left-hand person or right-hand person, and is now relocated Hari. But Brother Ravi has been amazing. He has really been the director of the community. And finally, I want to say, as you watch the play, watch for scene one and scene six. Scene one is done entirely by a group of tenors speaking, many of them factory workers, many from private tennis schools. And I'm, it's such a miracle because they can act to Albert Cattleby's Persian market, to the Persian market written by the great pianist Albert Cattleby. We have all these little ones acting for that. And scene six. And with the last bit of work, I think this had to be done because I asked somebody to come for this play 